Oh, girl, you know you would be. You know you will be. <laughs> um, but definitely seeing more familiar faces in the leadership positions, but also just seeing branding that speaks to ethnic minorities who smoke cannabis. Because the, the I, I would say like the underground cannabis smokers are a lot of those who are ethnic minorities because they aren't out yet. But there's so many of us. Like the more people I meet who are Asian, I, I don't expect them to smoke, and they always end up do doing it. And I'm like, oh, okay. I, there, are, like growing up, one of the things I've learned is like, oh, wow, a lot more people smoke weed than I like totally thought growing up. Yeah, but that's so interesting though that you when you meet a new person who is of Asian ethnicity, yeah. you, your first assumption is they don't smoke. Yeah, is that they don't consume it. Yeah. That is so interesting. I'm perpetuating the stereotype. Yeah. Dear Lord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like for me, like whenever I'm in a social circle and there are, you know, it's usually a diverse group of people, mm. but I find that like a, a lot of my circles are, there's predominantly Asian people in mm-hmm. it. I would have to be very careful about asking them if they want to, you know, have a toke. Yeah. It's like, are you down with us? Like, I would point out a joy and be like, are you, you, you good with this or no? Oh, you no. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can choose. You can say no. It's yeah. fine. Like, I'm not going to be like a bitch about it or whatever. Yeah. But that's so interesting that you jump to that immediate, like, assumption. You don't smoke it. You don't consume it. Yeah. That's right? like my baseline assumption. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's because that's what people's baseline assumption of me is. Because oh. people are usually really shocked to find out that I'm I really smoke. I mean okay. it was really funny because I'm in a sorority in uh, back at McGill and when I graduated my little told me that someone from like a couple grades below me in my high school joined our sorority and w- when they found out that like oh Caitlin works in weed there they thought it was like a different Caitlin in our sorority and when my little was like no Caitlin how she like it blew her mind she was like wait what she was like such a like straight edge straight. kid <laughs> back in high school like shook 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 yeah oh exactly and like when I tell people to this day that oh yeah like I smoke and yeah I smoke every day and I could probably smoke you under the table if I yep. wanted to mm-hmm. like they're like what no <laughs> way you can roll a joint what yeah, yeah. girl represent hey. <laughs> So, yeah, I guess because people take that stance with me, then I also go into meeting new people that are like, oh, they probably don't smoke. Yeah. So I guess like even for us, like in the industry, we have to like practice, like maybe not assume that everyone consumes, but we shouldn't just jump to the conclusion that like they don't, that they don't because of their exactly ethnicity or whatever yeah because i feel like a part of it is also because of our own influence of what we dealt with in terms of like you know family influence yeah you know so yeah i think i think that's that's a great thing to change for us like you know take the first steps yeah lead the way for the others (laughs) i love it yeah and if more cannabis companies and brands kind of geared their marketing and their product line towards ethnic minorities and Asians I think that it would benefit us in that you know you don't feel like you're alone you don't feel like oh I'm the only outlying Asian who smokes weed and and quote unquote bad because of it Mm -hmm. Um, and you just feel like you know there's that bond I don't know if you feel this but every time I meet another Asian who smokes weed I'm like immediate bond it lets me friends oh yeah 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 yeah, totally it's like a sisterhood (laughs) yeah especially with a girl yeah like oh whoa like where you been yeah it's true, it's true. It's gone so bad to the point that when people introduce me to new people, they're like, oh yeah, she smokes weed. You'll be friends with her. <laughs> I'm like, dope. Yes. <laughs> exactly. It was so, like, I think like when I first met you, mm-hmm. I, I did notice that you were the only other Asian girl in the, in the room. Yeah. And I was like. Greg and I spotted you in the crowd. Yeah. like, ooh, who this? Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Hey. And then like, and then you were on the panel. I'm like, okay, I know who this girl is. I was like, yeah, I get your newsletters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I love it. Oh my gosh. So, well, yeah. I hope that answered your question. Yeah, no, it was great. It was a great way to like close off this conversation. Yeah, but yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. This was super fun. I'm glad you liked it. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Like it's just such great conversation. Literally. Yes. Podcast dreams come true. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for having me on. No problem. Thank you for spending time with me and like telling me your stories. Again. <laughs> yeah, again, again. But honestly, like I have to meet your family too. Like I feel oh like God. I feel like I'd be I don't know. I feel like I need to feel them out. I don't I'm so curious. I don't know if they should ever know that I get this podcast. <laughs> They don't need to know about the podcast, but they, I feel like they need to know about me. Uh, yeah, 
percent, hundred percent. Okay, well, let me know what your plans are for Chinese New Year. <laughs> uh, getting lots of red pockets, obviously, and spending it all on weed. I'm with you. Exactly, I'm with you. We'll go to the dispensary with you. Bye. Bye. All right. Well, anyway, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>